In 2002, the Boston Celtics were worth $306 million. And just two decades later, that number is now standing at roughly $4.7 billion, the fourth highest in the NBA. The wild part is, that valuation is from nearly a year ago. So with the team winning its 18th championship this past June, could they become the NBA's first $5 billion team? Welcome to FOS Explains. Today, we're diving into the business of the Boston Celtics and their rise to becoming one of the most valuable franchises in the NBA. In 2002, Whit Grosbeck and his partners acquired the Boston Celtics for $360 million. This purchase marked a huge moment in the franchise's history. It set the stage for a turnaround that no one saw coming. Grossbeck, along with Steve Peluca, Robert Epstein, and other investors were all determined to restore the Celtics to their former glory. The Big Three Celtics were one of the most expensive teams in the league, but also one of the best. They won a championship in 2008 and made it to the finals again two years later. As the Big Three era waned, the team faced the challenge of transitioning into a new era. Grossbeck and the team decided to focus on acquiring promising young players. Smart trades and stockpiling draft picks helped the team stay competitive until finding their next franchise cornerstones. In 2024, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and head coach Joe Mazzulla brought championship banner number 18 to Boston. And that's the goal for most owners, win championships. But a surprising move came less than a month after the NBA Finals. The Boston basketball partners, led by Grossbeck, announced their intention to sell their entire stake in the team. In an official statement, the ownership group explained the decision to part ways with the team reached after profound deliberation with the ownership ranks stems from considerations related to estate planning and family matters. Analysts predict that after the 2024 championship, the Celtics are worth the same, if not more, than the record-setting $4 billion price tag the Phoenix Suns fetched in 2023, especially after a minority stake in the Nets' parent company, BSC Global, recently changed hands at a $6 billion evaluation. Other NBA franchises have also seen significant changes in ownership recently, and Mark Cuban sold the majority of his Dallas Mavericks shares to Miriam Adelson and Patrick Dumont for $3.5 billion too. Valued at $4.7 billion before their latest championship win, the Celtics enter the market with more titles than any other team. This puts them in the esteemed company of the Golden State Warriors, valued at $7.7 billion, the New York Knicks at $6.6 billion, and the Los Angeles Lakers at $6.4 billion. Unlike most transactions where the majority of shares are sold outright, the process to sell the Celtics will be a lot more complex. Grossbeck sees the team being sold in two stages. He believes that the 51% stake owned by his family will be sold first, likely by early 2025. Meanwhile, the owners expect to sell the 49% held by the other partners by 2028. Grossbeck plans to continue governing the Celtics until the full deal is completed. This extended process actually mirrors the ownership transition of the Minnesota Timberwolves. That process, though, has been riddled with arbitration and internal disputes. As the Celtics figure out where they're headed next, both their current and future owners are facing some serious luxury tax headaches. They've already had to shell out nearly $40 million in luxury taxes for the last season, and it's not looking much easier going forward. Last year, Jalen Brown inked the largest contract extension in NBA history, paying him $304 million over the next five years. And less than a year later, Jason Tatum just set the new record. He signed a $314 million deal, putting the Celtics on the books to pay $480 million to the duo alone between 2025 and 29. When you add in the extensions the team shelled out to other key players this summer, it's easy to see that this kind of money means the Celtics will probably be in the luxury tax zone for a while. With new ownership on the horizon, there's a possibility that the Celtics invest in new facilities, like a dedicated arena and practice practice facility. Right now, the Seas share the TD Garden with the NHL's Boston Bruins. That's owned by the Bruins' parent company, Delaware North. And New Balance oversees the Barbeck Center, which is the Celtics' practice facility. It's also worth noting that the Celtics hold a minority stake in NBC Sports Boston. While Grossbeck is slowly stepping away from Celtics' ownership, he still has his fingerprints all over the sports business world. Through Causeway Media Partners, he holds significant stakes in companies like SeatGeek, Flow Sports, and TuneIn. But the question remains, who will become the new owners of the NBA champion Celtics? Steve Peluca, who already owns a stake in the franchise since its transition in 2002, recently released a statement. He expressed his deep gratitude towards Grossbeck and the team's investment partners, and he also hinted at his interest in getting involved in the bidding. 
Hey Luca made his money by joining Boston-based Bain and Company in 1982. He swiftly ascended to the position of managing director by 1988, contributing significantly to its evolution into one of the largest private equity firms in the US. Another party rumored to be interested is Wynn Casinos. The company recently opened a new casino in Boston and has expressed interest in acquiring the team. John Henry and the Fenway Sports Group, who own the Boston Red Sox, are also rumored to be interested, along with tech tycoon Larry Ellison, the founder of the Oracle Corporation. Historically, the Celtics ownership has changed hands more than a dozen times time since Walter Brown founded the franchise in 1945, these changes have included outright sales, familial transfers, and even trades involving other franchises. But coming right off a championship, this transaction will definitely be one to keep an eye on, especially since the future owners are stepping into an organization with some of the most passionate and at times critical fans in sports. How do you think the new ownership will impact the defending champs, or will they? Share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe for more sports business stories.